Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Nuhidda alam wa ta'alim wa tazakura wa tazkir wa nafa'a wa lintifa' wa lifarata wa lisifada wa alhasa ala tamasuki bi kitabillahi wa sunati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa du'a'a ila lihuda wa dalata ala khair ibtugha'a wa jilla wa maradati wa qurbi wa thawabihi سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسلك عين من الدنيا مشرب السوف الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن نسلك عين من الدنيا مشرب السوف الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن نسلك عين من الدنيا مشرب السوف الهني وهب يغني صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين I mean, Alhamdulillah, we're still at the story of Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, right? Uh, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless all of you in your striving to learn more about the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a deep, deep intention, right? To fall deeper and deeper in love with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as you go through his life and you understand the struggles that he went through. So, you know, subhanallah, you know, when you go through the story of Sayyidina Aisha, right? That, you know, that, that there was not a single... Uh, trial that is not a single worldly trial and that did not afflict Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not a single one even slander came his way uh, every possible trial you could think of that is worldly every possible difficulty that a human being could go through it, it came into the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is why the ulama say that these 23 years you know and in fact they put 23 years of life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire life, you will, it is basically like a blueprint. You will basically, you, you, you will find something in the entire sira. You always find something for every zaman. Right? Till, the, till, till the day of judgment. So any incident that happens to anybody in their life, they can find a similar incident right? uh, pertaining to it right? in the life of Rasulullah SAW. And that itself is a miracle. You know, like how could someone's life, you know, subhanAllah, how could someone's life encompass the life of the, the lives of all of his the people in his ummah? You know, like anything that could have happened to you, you can look into the sirah and you find it there. Right? You find you find something. Right? You find something in the sirah to tell you what to do, right? And how to handle the situation. So subhanAllah, so even slander, right? but he's the farthest person from slander. Right? I mean, I mean, how who who would even believe, you know, any slander? Right. And, and, and the slander that came to someone so close to him, his wife, you know, that, that, that basically you know, attacked right, uh, his, his household. You know, when a man is slandered, right, when his wife is slandered, right, you know, that actually attacks his marriage. Right? You, know, you don't know how to keep your wife. Right? You don't know how to you know, guard over her. You know, she goes out there and she goes to... So which is why you look at Nabi Yusuf's story in, in Zulaikha. Right, that you know what she did with Nabi Yusuf, you know, what she tried to seduce Nabi Yusuf, it was kept you know, uh, secret. Right, because the Aziz, the, the, the minister who was the boss of Nabi Yusuf salam, right, he couldn't bear to expose that his wife tried to cheat on him with his slave boy. You know, like, like he couldn't bear to... Ex- it's, 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 it's shame. It's shame on the man itself. Right, it's actually shame on the man. You're attacking the man because his household, you do not love your own household. You know, that your wife, you know, uh, you know within your own household, your wife goes out. Right, so, so, you know, to attack Sayyidina Aisha was a very, very... As, as, Painful, at least in Sayyidina Aisha, it was so painful on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well as Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Right? So you can see, you know, the people are being affected by this, because slander affects those who love the one who is being slandered. Right? Whoever is being slandered, those who love them, they are also affected by, by, by the pain of it. And slander has a pain, we mentioned before, it has a pain that is not like loss. Right? Loss is different, like loss, you reba. You know, you lose a, f- a love family member, you reba. You know, she has passed away, Move on. Right, what slander right, is some is it's a pain that is different. Different kind of pain. Right? It's, a, it's like you know, you don't you don't know whether to defend yourself. Right? You don't know you know what to do, you don't know what to say, you don't know like it's so it's so difficult the situation. Right? And you don't know how to stop it also. 
Right? You don't know how to stop the slander right, from, 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 from being spread. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stood, right? I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stood uh, in, in uh, defense of Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha. In the Quran, Allah revealed, right, the, uh, the innocence of Sayyidina Aisha. And from there also came the, from there also came the law, like of people who accuse chaste women right, of, uh, of, of adultery or fornication. Right, there is a law in Islam that, called, that it falls under the hudud laws. Right, hudud laws. So hudud laws are basically the had. Right, hudud laws are laws whereby, um, Muhammad, uh, there are uh, there are certain crimes in Islam, right, whereby the punishment is in this world. Right, it is legislated uh, in Islam under an Islamic uh, government. Right, so like like stealing, right, hudud law cut the hand. Right, uh, alcohol, drinking alcohol in public. Right, the hudud law, you know, that will be imposed by the Islamic government, right, will be lashing. Right, somebody will be lashed, right, for, for drinking. Right, uh, fornication for the unmarried, lashing. For the married, stoning to death. Right, so there is basically, there are hudud laws in Islam. And basically, these hudud laws are to prevent, right, the widespread of corruption in public. Right, it's, it's, it's more of a deterrent than anything else. So it's so, we would say it's so harsh. Right, it's, it's, it's harsh because it destroys the fabric of society. Right, so of the hudud laws you have of murder and what's like the main, the major, major uh, crimes. Right, so there's may, the, you, if you learn in in fake, if you go into the fake of hudud laws, like there are only a few. Right, it's only a, a, like a handful right, of things that actually have hudud laws. Right, it's not like everything in Islam has a hudud law. Right, it's only things that are major that can destroy the fabric of society, like stealing. If people go around stealing is when you go into someone's house, there are secret belongings where they kept and they locked. You broke open and you stole. Right? That is when the law is, is applied. So it's not like I leave my phone there and I go off and someone came past and took it. Right? That's not counted. Right? But if someone actually entered the house, went to your safe, <coughs> broke it, or go into your drawer or to your cupboard and broke it and took the, 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 the valuables and ran off. Right? Because why? Right? If it's not that harsh, then people will live in fear. If someone can come into my house and take my stuff from where it's safe, right, from where I hide it, then I live in fear lah. Right, so it's to prevent, you know, the, the, the living in fear of how can someone come into my house and do that. Right? And the same thing with all other parts of the Hudud law. So one of it is here. Right, the law came down right, about the one who accuses a woman who is chaste. That means she's known for her chastity. So she's not, you know, somebody who is a prostitute. So if someone accuses a prostitute, it's, it's, it's not under the Hudud law. So basically you accuse a chaste woman. Innocent chase, she has no track record whatsoever, right, of being uh, lewd, right, or being indecent in any way whatsoever. Right, you accuse her of um, the exact act of fornication. That means something as uh, that means you must accuse as major as that. So if you just accuse her of being like another woman, it's not under the whole law. Right, it's basically you. That means that means this accusation, right, was not just that you know they say oh she went out with another another, another man. No, the accusation was adultery. Right, it was a direct accusation. Right, so that was, you know, is, is, is that severe, severe? So you're like, how could that slander go to that extent? You know, they didn't even see anything. You know, they didn't even, you know, no proof, nothing whatsoever. Right, but, you know, it went to that extent. Right, the, the, the accusation was on that. Right, so, so and Aisha was, was shocked. Right? She was like, <laughs> where did you even get this? Right, how could someone be so vicious, you know, in lying like that? That's how the hypocrites are. Right, the hypocrites are like that. And, and Muslims who follow this. Uh, Muslims who do this exact same thing, they are on the characteristics of the hypocrites. And uh, who go around spreading slander right, uh, on other people. It's called buhtan in Arabic. It's worse than a riba. Right? A riba is, is, is backbiting on what is true. And that's worse than 27 zina. Right? Slander right, is to, to spread what is not true. Right, so if really what is true is 27 zina and worse than that, and what is not true only Allahu Alam, you know, the, 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 the severity of someone who does that. Right? And the one who does it, they want to tell by it, they need to go out there to every single person who heard about the slander and say that they are a liar. And the tawbah is to the extent. Right? So that the law is so harsh against slander. It's so harsh against slander. Right? And subhanAllah, the, the, and, and if they go around creating discord amongst the people, amongst the Muslims, right, this place is called the Namam, Namima. Right? The Namam is the one who goes around creating fights between people right, by, by, by spreading news. Right? Whether it's true or not true, they spread news to create discord and breaking up in the families or in Muslims. That's also true in the Hadith, the Namam 
the namima, the namam will never smell paradise. So Islam is so harsh and so hard on all of these diseases that destroy, this destroy the cohesion of Muslims. No, it destroys the unity of Muslims. Right? These and these are diseases right, that is inherent in human beings. Right? Human beings go around doing this kind of nonsense. Right, so and, and then you wonder, you wonder why, like why must they hurt other people? Why must they, you know? And you look at the munafik. Basically, they that the munafik, their own their agenda is to hurt Rasulullah Islam. Right, that's their agenda. Whatever it takes to hurt him. So his most beloved wife, oh, right, oh, that would hurt. That would that would really hit him where it hurts. Right, his beloved wife. Let's attack there. Right, but what hurt more was that the believers, there were believers who were getting involved. Right, who basically heard the news and they spread it. And they were not munafiq. They were believers, believers. They were, they were mu'minun. Right, they were believers. And one of them was Sayyidina Abu Bakr's own cousin. I mean, Sayyidina Aisha's uncle. Right, her own uncle was spreading it. But not that he was you know, uh, gleefully spreading it, like how the munafiqun were. Right, he was angrily spreading it. You know, in this, in this he believed it. And he was so disgusted by his niece in a way. You know, of course, without proof, <laughs> there was no proof whatsoever. So, so Allah, Allah, you know, maybe the, the munafiq was so strong in this slander that it became fact. It became as if it was fact, right? So, people who are believers took it on as, of course, it has to be true. Everyone's talking about it. Which uh, it's complete nonsense. It's complete nonsense, right? So, so Allah responds to us in the Quran. <laughs> Allah says that in the Quran. Allah says, "O believers." When news comes to you, especially from 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 from, from mischief makers, right? Go and uh, check. Is it true? Go and check. Or if not, ignore it. Either you ignore it or you check, right? But you don't. You dare believe it. Right? Don't you dare. If any news comes to you by these mischief makers, you know either you go and verify yourself, right, for the truth of it. And there's a story of Sayyidina Omar, right, who I think I mentioned the story last week, uh, whereby he went past. Uh, he went out at night. Right? And, he, and he saw a man and a woman together right? He didn't see exactly what they were doing But he saw that they were together right? So he assumed that they were you know, committing uh, uh, adulterous acts So he, the next day He didn't go to the mute next day He came up on, on the mimba and he said you know, Oh people, what do you think of an imam right? Who saw you know, adulterous acts you know, in the night And he said that you are the imam And then he said And then, and then, he, and then and, and, you know, if you're the punishment, you punish them lah. Right? And Sayyidina Ali stood up and said that no if you punish them, we have to punish you. So in Arabic, because you are accusing them of what Allah gave, you know, a, a high, a, a strong uh, a condition over that if you want to accuse anybody of this kind of acts, four witnesses bring your four witnesses, and you have, and these four witnesses have to witness the exact act. They have to witness it wide open. That means they were so indecent. That four people could watch on. Like it was is to that so the law is to that extent. Because you, you're so you're so indecent, you're, you have no shame whatsoever. They're doing in the public, in open for four people to watch you. This kind of acts destroy society. Right? Because it's so public. Uh, so so in I said so Omar, you're the only one who saw, who, who claims it. I didn't see anything. You just you just suspect it. So if you want to 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 to, to uh, you know to, to throw uh, a blame at them or to a claim over them, then now you can uh, the hat <laughs> because now you are an accuser without proof, right? So Islam is so strong about this. The laws are so firm, right? Which makes you like, you no, know, this is really it's not from a human being. Sharia cannot be from a human being because human beings will not do this kind of like laws. You know, the laws are so the Sharia is the Sharia itself is proof. Right, every, in fact, every part of Islam. But Sharia is a very strong proof. This is not a human being speaking. Right, to be this hard right, against people. Wait, wait, which which, which uh, law system do you find the one who accuses without proof being punished to the extent? I mean, the one that the accuser gets, gets whipped. Right, but the accuser gets whipped. Right, to protect the dignity of those who are innocent. Right, so this is the accuser who plug it with. Right, so I mean, which 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 law system has that? Uh, Subhanallah. So we're going to go according to the story. So, so basically, um, we are at a point whereby she's going to be re- uh, uh, proven innocent. And I'm going to read through. So so she said. Um, 
And Sayyidina Muhammad, right? Uh, so there are some men from Sahaba to Sahaba to ask them, right? And I'm going to read through a few of them because there's Zainab bin Jahash, right? Uh, and, and a few of them, right? So let me read through. So as for us, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the re- revelation was slow in coming, so we, we mentioned why Rasulullah was not defending his wife yet. He knew Sayyidina Aisha was, was, was innocent. He knew. He knows his wife. And most you know, spouses, you kind of know what to expect from your spouse. Right? So he knew that she's incapable and she's so innocent. She, it's something so far from her mind. You know, she doesn't even know people actually do these kind of things. <laughs> and she's so innocent in that way. Right? So, he's so, so he, of course he knew his wife was, was innocent. But as a prophet, with the munafiq on your neck, you know, on your back, right, they're watching your every move. Right? And the moment you take a, a wrong step, right, they're on it. Right, so if he was to just you know uh, protect his wife, because the law has not come down yet, the law has not come down to say that you know if you have no proof you can't say, the law has not come down. So it's the first time this thing actually happened. Uh, so they had no gu- they don't, he, he was waiting for guidance as to what to do. Now when slander comes, what what is the law? The law is verify, right? But the law has not come yet, right? So so Rasul is waiting for the law. What what do I do? When there's accusation all around, the entire society is ac- accusing my wife. And what do I do? And he's waiting for the revelation. So when it was slow in coming, it wasn't coming. And he was waiting for it to come, it wasn't coming. Right? And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches the society. It was a lesson the believers never forgot. Because you see, if Allah sent down the, 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 the wahyu immediately, right, it would not have had the kind of you know, deep, and, and, and uh, 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 deep impact on society at all. Right? Because you know, Allah let it run its course. He let it run. Right? And it's, he looked at how the believers react to this. Because one thing about standard is that everybody knows standard is terrible. Right? It's something that is, in the, is innate in a human being. Right? Lying, standard, cheating. You don't have to be uh, of any religion to know that it's wrong. Right? Any human being would know. It's a munkar. Right? It's, 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 it's wrong in, in all cultures. Right, to slander, to lie, to cheat. Right? But, but you see, only in Islam, that slander and backbiting is so severe. Right? If you go like, to, to like, non-Muslims whatsoever, to them, you know, it's, not a, a major, it's not a major crime. It's not a crime. They won't call it a crime to slander and backbite. Right? They won't actually, I mean, now you can say defamation and you can, you can, you can you know, sue the person and whatsoever. Right? But, but you know, if like, within people and just you know, slander here and there, right, it's not major in public, Right, most people will not see it as a crime. Right, they will sit down and they begin to spread gossip. Right, and it's basically a pastime. Right, in Islam, it's a crime, crime. Right, which is why, which makes it, you know, Subhanallah. <laughs> right, you know, human beings will not consider gossip as a crime. Right, but God considers gossip as a crime. Right, because the, the a person's dignity is himself. Right, so to kill his dignity and to kill his honor is to kill him. Right? And we know of people who can be completely destroyed because of gossip. Completely. Their entire job right? destroyed because of gossip. Right? So Islam, Allah sees this is severe. Right? Gossip is severe. Nip it in the bud. Right? It's not allowed at all in this religion. Right? Uh, uh, slander, not allowed at all in this religion. Right? So subhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in all these things, it shows you right, that this is really not a human being speaking because only God can judge like that. Right, only God has that, you know, uh, the perception <laughs> right, as how how severe this is. So she came. So it was slow in coming. He came anxious. So he went to 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 discuss with some of his companions to seek their opinion because there's no law yet. So Rasul is how Rasul is when there's no wahi from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He's a human being. He's not. A, I mean, he is a prophet. So he can only do his job as a prophet when there's wahi. There's no wahi. He's like any of us. Whereby he goes around. Right, and he seeks opinions. That's what most human beings would do. Right. So so he goes around and he goes to Umar bin Khattab and he said, Right, uh, so he says, so, Ya Umar, what do you think? And Umar said, Who made her to Ya Rasulullah? And he said, Allah most high. And he said, So do you consider that Allah will deceive you with her? So Sayyidina Umar, you know, Sayyidina Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha. And if Allah married you to her, then why would Allah you know allow this to happen? Right? Do you think Allah would deceive you to give you a wife that would uh, that would that would betray you? Right, so then, then, uh, then, then, so it's, it's in Sayyidina Omar says it's a terrible, slanderous falsehood. You know, Sayyidina Omar basically dismissed it. <laughs> he couldn't even, he wouldn't even, you know, he wouldn't even hear it. You know, you know what? It's, it's slander, it's falsehood, you know, uh, dismiss it. So he went to Sa'ad bin Mu'adh, and Sayyidina Mu'adh uh, said, Subhanallah, 
It is not fitting for us to speak about it. Glory be to you. It is slanderous lies. So Sa'aw and Ma'as also same, same, same thing. Right? They, they dismiss it as all lies. Right? And other companions said, You are the messenger of Allah. Upon you descends revelation. We are obedient followers. It means we're just waiting for what you're going to do. Right? So we're not, we're not even going to have an opinion about the situation. We're just waiting for your, for your wahyu. And Rasulullah himself is waiting for wahyu. They're all waiting for wahyu right, to come down. Right, um, and then uh, and others said that you know by God, God will make all things clear to you. So do not hasten. You know, wait, right, wait. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr, right. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr uh, now is because Sayyidina Abu Bakr is is so close to him. Is his own daughter, right. So so for him, you know, what well, what does the father say? Right. What does the father say? And right? what what can he say? Right. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he just said, listen, right. And to do as and his face became as though. You know, like that, like, as though uh, uh, acid has been poured over it. You know, it was it. He was in so much stress, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Right? So much stress as to what does a parent do when your child is slandered and the entire city is talking about it. About this. I mean, you, can really, you must really see the severity of the situation. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he's hurt. He doesn't know what to do right, with, his, with his daughter. Right? Uh, I mean, with his children, with his daughter. He doesn't know what to do. Right? Rasul said to him, Right. Do you not excuse me regarding Aisha? Right. And, and, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr stood before her, raised his hand and hit her chest right, with a severe blow. And Rasul Sam said, God forgive you, Abu Bakr, I did not mean this. Right. So basically, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, uh, he, he, he was so stressed about the situation. Right. And, uh, and, and basically, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he, he was a bit uh, hard on Sayyidina Aisha. Because it's, it's basically human, you're human beings. You're human beings. Right, so when, when the entire society talks about something that is false, if everybody talks about it, right, it becomes true, even though it's not true. <laughs> right, because everyone's talking about it. So it's as if it's true. The loud mouse is the one that exit their, their stand. Right, so so Sayyidina Bakar, he, he's affected. Lah. He's affected by, by the situation. But Rasulullah told him, be, 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 be easy on her. Right, don't... Uh, don't don't do anything yet. I wait for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to do to 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 to, to reveal. Sayyidina Aisha herself didn't bother saying anything. Right, Sayyidina Aisha is a very strong-headed young girl. Right, so so she she's like I don't even have to say anything. You know why should I defend myself? <laughs> and she's of that she's of that ca- that that character. You know like you know <laughs> this is so absurd. Do I even have to defend myself? You know, so she didn't, bo- she didn't even bother And to her like No one asked me you know, No one asked me For my, for, for my side right, So why should I care you know, why should I, you know, so, but, but she was affected By that, that you know, Everybody else was affected right, But she you know, She didn't Say anything Because to her Even if she said something They, they already spread All this stuff right, without, without asking her you know, So What do you want to say right, And Sarah, Sarah went to say Jannah bin uh, Zainab Sarah Zainab bin Jahash Sayyidina Zainab bin Jahash, she is known to have something with Sayyidina Aisha. In a way, like there's a, there's a, there's a, like a rivalry. Uh, the, 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 the wives of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they have two camps. <laughs> in a way, they, you can actually, if you read more enough hadith, you know there are two camps. Right? There's, you have the Sayyidina Aisha camp, right? Sayyidina Aisha, Sayyidina Hafsa, Sayyidina Sauda, right? they're all in one camp. Sayyidina Um Salama, one camp. Right, and then you have uh, or Sayyidina Usama and other camp Sayyidina Zainab bin Jahash you know, and all the other you know, later wives so you have the earlier wives and the later wives so they have the, the camps right? so, but they're not, they're not enemies they're not enemies right? but it's like, you know, like this is a gang this is my gang this is your gang <laughs> they are the clicks they are clicked you know, how, how women are wherever they go <laughs> where women always wherever you are click 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 click, click. <laughs> and it's really our nature <laughs> we just form clicks <laughs> So even though amongst the wives they had that, right? but after the death of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Aisha would actually narrate that they would come together all the wives and they would remember him together, right? and they would cry together. Right? So after his death, they actually united <laughs> all of them. While he was alive, like, it was a you know a jealous game, <laughs> like back and forth and all around. But but of course towards the end of his life, uh, they, all of the wives uh, gave him permission to stay in the house of Sayyidina Aisha, right? because they knew that there was where he wanted to die. Right, that was where he wanted to be, right, with her. Right, so they all gave up their days. Because everybody had their days, right? They all gave up their days right, for him to... Because he was sick also, it was hard for him to move from house to house. Right, so he, he used to... to we're going through the story. To the end of his life, he used to ask, tomorrow where am I at? Tomorrow where am I at? Tomorrow where am I at? And he would ask the wife whose house is in. 
And eventually they, they, he didn't ask, right, but they figured right, that he wants to stay in one place. He doesn't want to keep moving around. Right? Because he's, he's weak. He's weak and he's feverish and everything. So, and, but he didn't ask because he knew it was their right. He never asked them, let me, let me stay in one place. You know? But then they came to their own uh, initiative. Lah, right? And then they figured that uh, he was most rested at the house in Aisha. Right, so they all agreed to just give their days in Aisha and just rest there. And of course, they know that it's, it's not. It's not like you know he's he's there, you know, uh, uh, having fun with her in a way. Right, he's there uh, with her nursing him. Right, he's sick. Right, he's sick. So she was just basically nursing him. Right, and and it it lightened his sickness right, with her around. Right, so you know there was the the, the maqam of Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha. She has like manakib. Right, she has like she has basically uh, uh, virtues or merits right to her name. I said, and she used to go around boasting about her merits, right? She was, I was the only one who was married virgin. I was the only one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, gave in a dream, right? To Rasul some command him to marry me. I was the, I was the only one that, you know, uh, my sliver was missed with his sliver before he passed away. I was, so she had like a few that she would talk about. <laughs> that was the way she was, Sayyidina Aisha, right? So, I mean, she has a way. <laughs> She's very, mashallah, she has a, her way. So she went, he went to Sayyidina Zainab bin Jahash, Right, about Sayyidina Aisha and said to her, to her, what do you know, O Zainab, about Aisha? And then he said, Ya Rasulullah, I protect my hearing and my sight. Right, that means I, I don't hear all these things. You know, I, I, I stay away from standard. Zainab, Zainab, so again, someone who is uh, level-minded. Right, and then she said, by God, I know nothing but good of Sayyidina Aisha. And she's on the other camp, right? But, she's, but they are fair, they are fair. Right? So I only know good of her. So I mean, if a wife wants to be vicious, you say, oh, I'm sure it's true. <laughs> right? I mean, that, that, to, to make them, you know, break apart. Right? But they have taqwa. They have taqwa. They are they're, they're, they're afraid. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, I owe you who believes, have fear of Allah, have taqwa of Allah, right? and rectify between Muslims. Right? And, and only those who cause corruption between Muslims, right? or cause discord between Muslims, they are the ones who have no taqwa. Right, they are the ones who are, they don't they don't they not fear they don't they don't fear Allah subhanahu wa taala because you can cause you know uh, uh, fights between between believers. And Allah says those who have fear, you will reconcile between the believers. You know, like, Subhanallah. You know, the Quran has a lot of verses about reconciliation. There's a lot of verses in the all of hadith about the virtues of reconciling. Right. So so you see the Sahaba how they are. You know, in 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 uh, in. in Supporting Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sayyidina Aisha said That she was the one Who competed with me <laughs> Of the wise Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And she was my competition lah. And, and she She was safeguarded by Allah Because of her warak right? She had fear right, Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Her sister Hamna right, Was deceived by her zeal For her sister And was condemned With those who slandered So her sister Actually went around With slander uh, Zainab Sayyidina Zainab bin Jahash uh, Her sister yeah, yeah. So she went around slandering Sayyidina Aisha. Right, so, so the believers had those who were slandering. Right, they actually fell into this major sin. Right, a lot of the believers fell into the major sin. And then Rasulullah asked Um Ayman, she said, Innocent are uh, my hearing and sight. Again, I don't hear all this stuff. Right? I don't want to hear and I don't want to know. Right? So I know nothing but goodness from her. Right? She's, she's, a, she's a innocent person. Sayyidina Aisha said, Rasulullah Wasallam called for Ali bin Abi Talib. We mentioned about Sayyidina Ali, sorry, right, uh, last week. And Usama bin Zaid. And took counsel with them about separating from his wife, in, from Sayyidina Aisha. You know, she just basically taking advice from, from the Sahaba. Right, so, so some, he's, he's not, it's not like he, he took one, one Sahaba's point of view, then he just went on with it. Right? He basically took as many views as possible. Right? And then he's just going to weigh his, his. You see, the thing about it is that he's just waiting for the Wahi to come. <laughs> They are waiting for the wahi to come. Where's the wahyu? Right? Because there's a thing, you know, he's, 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 and this is another proof he's a prophet. Because right? he's not doing anything. And, and it's such a, such, a, such a serious situation. And you're prolonging it. Right? Because he has no choice. He's waiting for wahyu. He, just, you know, he can't make it up. He can't make up a law. Right? So you see, even at, to this extent, when it's so dire, he can't make up a law. He cannot. His hands are tight. Right, he's just waiting for the wahib. This itself is a proof of prophethood. Right, this, even this incident of the slander of Sayyidina Aisha is a proof that he's a prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So then, um, so as for Osama, he spoke well of me and said, Ya Rasulullah, she is your wife and we know nothing of her except goodness. Right, you know nothing of her except goodness. It's a slanderous lie. 
Right, it's a slender, it's a lie. Right, it's it's turn away, ya Rasulullah. And so Sayyidina Ali, he said, ya Rasulullah, uh, Allah has not limited you regarding women, and there are many. You are able to marry another in her place. Or he said, divorce is permissible for you. Ask her servant, for she will tell you the truth. Right. So so you see Sayyidina Ali, he's not that he's bad mouth Sayyidina Aisha, right? But Sayyidina Ali is on the side of, uh, you know what, precaution. Right. So whether or not she's innocent, right, you have the choice of marrying someone else. You know, there are many women out there, right? You know, so basically, like, 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 you're doubtful of this matter here. So he's not saying she's, she's, she's guilty, but he's just saying that, you know what, there are other people, right? You don't have to limit yourself to her, right? This is Sayyidina Ali's point of view, which is a very practical idea. He's just being very practical. Uh, but he's not at all having anything as in Aisha at all. Uh, don't, don't, mis- don't misunderstand this. Uh, you know. so, so some people you know, who, who cause slander, when Sayyidina Ali and Sayyidina Aisha, they will use this situation. Say that Sayyidina Ali dislikes Sayyidina Aisha. Uh, there's no such thing. No such thing. The Zahaba did not dislike each other. Uh, they are believers and they have taqwa. So you can't say believers hating other believers. Impossible. Uh, even in the middle of the camera, Sayyidina Ali fought Sayyidina Aisha. Uh, and that was even not their fault. In the first place, the, 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 the hypocrites were the ones who, who fired up the battle. And they were basically caught you know, in, the, in the entire chaos. Sayyidina Ali would come to the camel, Sayyidina Aisha, and say, How are you a mother of the believers? You know, he would check on her. Are you okay? Do you need anything? Right? And then he would command for her to be brought back to her house. Right? So, I mean, he, he would guard over her. Sayyidina Ali, radiallahu anhu. Right? So, those who, there are a lot of slanders. And it's even slander on top of Sayyidina Aisha. Sayyidina, like, who would dare slander the beloved wife of Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Right? So, people today... So Sayyidina Aisha, Sayyidina Aisha, her slander is continuing until today. People slander her up to today. And those who are on the, you know, if you know like those group of people who are on the camp of uh, so-called the Ahlul Bayt or, or Sayyidina Ali and whatsoever, which is basically against what Sayyidina Ali did, you know, you know in, in the first place. And, but there are people up to today, right? They, call, they carry on the slander of Sayyidina Aisha. I make up stories about her, right? Where she's the most beloved uh, wife to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, also Sayyidina Khadija. So he called for Barira, and Barira was the one that last year I mentioned that she said that you know I you know by the one who sent you in truth, never did I see her do anything blameworthy. She's a young girl who will fall asleep and leave her family's door unguarded, and the pet go will eat it. Right, so she just says as far as I've seen her do, <laughs> and she will leave the the door there, and the goat will come and makan. Right, eat up the dough. Right, that's as 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 as, as blameworthy as she can get, <laughs> because she will fall asleep while while cooking. Right. <laughs> Right, I mean, that nothing further than this that she has done, you know. Of I would say, what will be a will be a blame, right? And then, so you know, so he he continued going around, right? And and uh, uh, and Sayyidina Aisha said that Ibn Mu'atta was asked about and found to be one who was unable to approach women. So when he heard that uh, what was being said about him, Subhanallah, by the one who's Hands in my life, I never did a cover of female ever. Uh, he died a martyr. Uh, so basically, Rasulullah went around right, and he was basically asking each of the Sahaba, I'm going to go straight into the innocence of Sayyidina Aisha. So Rasulullah said, hmm. Sorry. So here there's something about the Munafik. Hmm? Barira is the, is the servant girl of Sayyidina Aisha. Yeah, because Sayyidina Ali says to her, so go and ask the servant. The servant would know. Right? And the servant would be like, the only thing I can find wrong about her is that she sleeps when she's trying to make bread. <laughs> that was not a servant. That was not a servant. That was uh, one of her relatives. Her relatives, right? So, so the, the person cursed it. Uh, you will find it in the previous picture. Right? One of her relatives was the one that actually did that. Mm. Alright So this is part about the Munafik I'm really true also Alright so Sayyidina Aisha said When Rasulullah stood to address the people And I knew not And I didn't know that he had done that Right He thanked Allah And praised, his, praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala As he deserves And he said Oh people How is it that there are men Harming me As regards my wife By right? saying untruths about her So now he's saying it out Because he's At this point He's done his uh, You know His consultation <laughs> Like, and he's basically settled right, on that, you know what he's going to say? That this is not true. Right, he's going to say, even without the wahyu. Because they're waiting for wahyu, and why is not coming? And right, something needs to be done. Right, so after consultation, 
right? He actually does what most human beings would do, right? There's no, there's no, there's no proof. You all have no proof, right? So who are who are you all? You know, hurting me with regards to my wife and saying untruths about her. By God, I know not about my wife, but what is good. And they have mentioned a man, meaning Safwan, right? The man that they claim that she, uh, she what, had adultery with, right? Safwan, whom about whom I know not, but what is good. I know Safwan to be an upright person, a right believer. Right? So you're, you're not only accusing Sayyidina Aisha, you're accusing Safwan also. Right? But he is, you know, I mean, we saw the story. He brought his camel. Right? He, he said, he said, you know, when he saw her. <laughs> right? I mean, the kind of taqwa right, they have, and they say, oh, mother of the believers. I right? didn't say Aisha. Right? He knew her from she, when she was young. They were young together. They're, all, they're both young. I right? said, so and she knew, he knew her from before the hijab laws. So he knew her as one of the girls. You know, who would run around and play. She married, she was very young. Right? So, so he knew her at that point. So that's so why he saw her in her face uncovered. Right? But hijab, well, hijab was on, the face was uncovered because she was sleeping. He said, Inna ilayna ni raji on. Right? And she woke up and then he, she said, The mother of the believers, you know, or the, the wife of the prophet. He says, along those lines, the wife of the prophet. And then she realized the hukum that's on her, you know, which is hijab. And she, she took her cloth and she covered her face straight away because she realized that, oh, you know, that, uh, I'm alone with a man and my face is not covered. Right? She, 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 she covered her face. He brought his camel there. They look at her, sit on the camel, said, Mother, uh, right. I mean, bounce, mount the camel. Without even looking. She just got up and he walked in front, never looked back, walked all the way to Medina without looking back on the who's on the camel. He didn't even glance at her, didn't even talk to her, didn't even nothing. <laughs> right? So he was such a gentleman. <laughs> right? So Sarah Samson, you know, Safwan. You all even accusing Safwan. I only know goodness from him. I have never you know, he has no track record. You know, usually you would you could sense who are the people who would cheat. Usually you can sense that they have a slyness about them. They have a, you know that they, they have this thing about them, right? So, so there are people whom you know it's impossible for them to cheat. It's impossible. So Safwan, whom I know nothing about goodness, nor does he ever enter my home except that I am present. Right, he only ever comes to my house when I'm there. He never comes there uh, otherwise. So why, why is this slender there on Safwan also? And then he says here, right, nor have I gone a trip right, except that he has come with me. Right, he follows me on all of my trips. So when I'm in Medina, right, he only comes when I'm in my house. When I go overboard, he's with me anyway. Right, so I know him. Right, he's, he's an upright, chaste man. Right, why you all, why is this uh, slender on him? Right, then referring to Abdullah bin Ubay, right, he said, Who will excuse me if I seek reprisal against a man who, whom I have been informed has harmed me concerning my wife? Right, talking about the, the hypocrite, Abdullah bin Ubay. He was the one who began the slander. He's the chief of the hypocrites. He's the one who actually began the slander of Ansayna Aisha. And the hypocrites took it up and the believers got involved in it. Right, it's such a <laughs> and Sa'ad bin Mu'az, right, the head of the owls, rose and he took off his sword. Right, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Sa'ad bin Mu'adh. Right, Sa'ad bin Mu'adh is one of, he's, he's a leader of, Sa'ad bin Mu'adh is the one, uh, the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his death. Right, he was a great Sahaba, right, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, so, and he was a leader of the Aus, right, the, the, the two tribes of Medina, he was a leader of the Aus. Right, he took off his, and he was very hard against the Munafiq. Right, he would, you know, he was the one also who said that when, when the Jews, the thought you will see at the end of after the, the, the battle of the trench when the Jews betrayed, right, he was the one who said execution, execution. Right, this Amlo bin Ubay, he is a leader of the Khazraj. Right, there are two tribes of Medina, eh, Khazraj and 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 Aus. Right, Amlo bin Ubay, when their Jewish allies betrayed Rasulullah SAW, he interceded. He's a munafik. And he interceded and he said, you know, Ya Rasulullah, let them go. You know, banish them. You know, banish them into the desert. So they, they were banished. Right? But when Sa'ad bin uh, Mu'az, when his Jewish ally tribe betrayed the Muslims, he said, Ya Rasulullah, execution. Execute all of the men. Execute them. And he was the ally. Right, so, but he was strong believers in uh, Sa'ad bin Mu'az. Right? So, we are going to the story. Right? <laughs> because we are going into the very technical part of the seerah. Right? But it's important for us to understand right, the, the laws here. So he says, I will justify your act of retribution. And if he is of the Aus, I will strike his neck. His neck. And if he is of our brothers, the Khazraj, the other tribe, you will order us and will do as you say. 
Right, Sa'ad bin Ubadah rose and he was the head of the Khazraj. Right, Sa'ad bin, bin, Sa'ad bin uh, Ubadah, right, there are two Sa'ads. So, they're all Sa'ads. <laughs> you know uh, Habib Sa'ad? <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, Habib Sa'ad, the one who wrote the Book of Intentions and he wrote you know, the Book of First Yuwak, Habib Sa'ad. His name is Habib Muhammad Al-Adarus. But Sa'ad is his like, nickname, so-called. Right, he has a book called As-Sa'adun. Right, which means all the science among the Sahabas <laughs> and all about their lives. It's an entire book on the science. <laughs> right, but but science is not a common name in our society because it's spelled S A D Z, you know. <laughs> so it's not a common name, but it's science. Science. Science is Sin uh, Ain Dal. Science. Huh? Yeah. Happiness. <laughs> it's not sad. <laughs> no, but I mean, because of the, of the spelling, you know. You didn't name your child Sa'ad. <laughs> there are many great Sa'ads. You know, Habib Sa'ad. That's his name, Habib Sa'ad. All right. Uh, so Sa'ad bin Bala rose and he was the head of the Hajjah and said to Sa'ad bin Mu'az, you, uh, uh, so he said to Sa'ad bin Mu'az, you lie by God, you will not kill him, nor are you capable of doing so. Right, he, he was your people. You wouldn't have liked him to be killed. So they did begin to argue for Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam, and Rasulullah got upset, and he got down from the mimba and he went off. So they began to argue in front of him because you know Saad bin Mu'ad said, you know, if it was the Hazrat, I will kill him. And then Saad bin uh, bin Ubada, he became defensive. He said, how can you kill my own people? You can kill my people. <laughs> and then they began to argue. And then Rasulullah he got down. He he got he fell silent, and he, he went. Right, and then the Sahabas now they all became silent because <laughs> right, it's a very stressful time for us. So, so he went to the house of Sayyidina Aisha. He went there. You see, Rasulullah is waiting for Wahi. And there's a hadith where Sayyidina Aisha said that you know, of her virtues, of her merits, that Jibreel has never come down with a Wahi while Rasulullah was, was with any of his wives except her. Right. That means she was the only one right, whereby when she was with her husband, Jibri would actually come with a wahi. So she was the only wife that, 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 that happened to her. That like she would be with him and, and uh, Jibri would come with a wahi. All the other wives never experienced that. Only she. Or Sayyidina Khadija, of course. Right? She had plenty of, uh, of the experience. But Sayyidina Aisha was the only one of those in that time. Right? So you see, Rasulullah has been staying away from Sayyidina Aisha the entire time. You see? And the wahi hasn't been coming. <laughs> so when he finally went to her, the wahi came. <laughs> so that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really, really, really uh, honoring Sayyidina Aisha. There's no wahi you want until you go to her. Right? You must go to her. Right? <laughs> you must be in her presence, then the wahi comes. Right, this is uh, you know of the of the virtue of Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha. So in Aisha says, when Rasulullah entered upon me, while my parents and the woman of the Ansar were with me, so a woman from the Ansar were with me, I wept, and the woman wept. I have been crying for two nights and a day continuously. Yeah, and <laughs> continuous crying. I getting no sleep at all until I felt that my sobs would rupture my heart. I had a kind of like deep emotional pain. But you feel like you no. Know, in actually, in the hadith, she said my liver because she thought that that's where the pain comes from. They all they, they all think that the pain comes from the liver, right? So basically, see, I this, the pain was so great. <laughs> I thought my, my you no, know, I would just die of my heart being 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 broken, you know, being ruptured. And the Rasulullah greeted us and sat down. It was the first time he had come in to sit with me since what has what was said had been said. First time. Now the wahyu comes. Right? The first time he came and sat down, the wahyu comes. Right? He bore witness to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanked and praised him. And he said, O oh, Aisha, such and such has reached me concerning you. It's the first time he's actually addressing it with her right, directly. Even though before that, at, 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 during the khutbah, he actually said, No, you all are hurting me right, with what you're spreading. Right? It says, No truth. And I know my wife to be good. And I know Safan to be good. <laughs> so he has really done that, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi But still, he's just he still, you know, he needs assurance right, as to what's going on. So he says, "O uh, Aisha, I was saying, Muhammad." Right, so first he came to sit with me since he, what was said. He said he bore witness, praise Allah, and he said, "O Aisha, right, this thing has reached me concerning you. If you are innocent, then Allah will absolve you, and He will announce your innocence. 
And if you have committed a sin, then ask Allah for forgiveness and repent to Him. Right? So He's not rejecting Sayyidina Aisha. Right? He's saying, if you're human, you're a human being. You're a human being. Right? If there's a sin that was, that was, that was committed, was Safran was a handsome young man. Right? This is why the, the standard began. He was a very handsome young man. Right? Who was like, you would say, in the age zone of Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha. Uh, he was in, in his 20s. You know, like, handsome young man. So the slander began, and it was very juicy slander, right? Because it was such a like such a nice. Right, so it was. I mean, it was such uh, such a like like such a nice slander to make up, you know, because of how of how you know his age and her age was so nice, nice and close, and they're both young people in the desert, and they're both good looking, and like what's stopping them, that kind of thing. So it's, it's the, the, the slander in our time would definitely work <laughs> like also, and because of how you say how, how do you say, what's the word, um, how suited in a way. Right, uh, her age to his age, her looks to his looks, you know, like in, in, in a way. Right, so he did say, you know, that if you have committed a sin, then repent. Right, repentance is there. Right, door of repentance is wide open. Right, so then he didn't, you know, uh, rule out. Right, but my, this is what, what you have done, lah. So if you're innocent, Allah will uh, reveal your innocence. Right, but and because the the, the wahyu has not come up to this point, now this is you're shaky, lah. Right, the wahyu has still not come. Right, like, is she? Haven't yet. He's coming now. He's coming now. Yeah, he's meeting. He's talking to her. He's talking to her. He came. She, I, there are some came and the me, my family. <laughs> right. So, so he's really with her. He's talking to her. He said, "Oh, Aisha, right. So, if you are innocent, Allah will will will, will prove your innocence. And if you have sinned, ask Allah for forgiveness. And for if a servant confesses his sin and repents to Allah, Allah will forgive him. No sooner did he say this to me." Then my crying ceased, so that I could not feel a single tear. Right, he, she was so <laughs> upset <laughs> that he said that. <laughs> and he basically said, "If you're innocent, Allah will clear you. Right, and if you're if you're sinful, then repent, lah. Right, a very practical right, situation." And she was like, "She just stopped crying. <laughs> Stop crying. She's very upset. <laughs> then you even suggest that I committed a sin. You know, like like so upset. <laughs> he said, "Not not not even a tear. He said, no tear at all. I was." I stopped crying, <laughs> stare at him, and then she said that. Uh, she, said, she said to her parents, "Oh, parents, answer the prophet." Like she won't even answer. <laughs> she was so she's very so in Aisha, you know, it was not her character. Right? She's you know she <laughs> she's very um, strong character, very strong character. Even with the prophets of Allah, them, she won't call out. <laughs> right? She won't no, she won't admit defeat. Right? She's like you know what, you just. Said there's a possibility of me committing the sin. I am not accepting that. <laughs> and she's not accepting that. It's not being rude to the system, but she's just, you know, her character. Her character like that. You know, like, like, you know don't say that about me. You know, like some people, they, they cannot tahan. You know, if you say something to even suggest that they might lie or they might, you know, do you, you dare say that about me? You know, don't you know that I never do such a thing? You know, you know, like, you know. But it's not like an arrogant thing, but it's more the character. They're so strong in that way. So she said, Right, uh, words to her parents. Will you not answer the messenger of God? And will you not answer Rasulullah <laughs> Islam? She won't answer. <laughs> she won't answer Rasulullah <laughs> Islam to her parents who were there. Right, so Rasulullah was there. Her parents were there. There was another woman there. She said to her parents, "Answer him." Right. So then they answered by God. We know not what to answer him. We don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, by God, I, I know not a family. Right, who was tra- as trial as the family of Abu Bakr? I was trial then. Right, Sayna Sayna Aisha says that she says herself. Right, I didn't. Like, we were that. We were. It was the worst test that's ever hit a family. It would hit my family. And then she said, and so when I found them unable to speak for me, right, I began crying again. And I burst into fresh tears. You know, even my parents will not defend me. Right, she, was, so she said, no, that she don't want to answer us. So like, was so up. She was so angry. But she just said to her parents, you, you answer them. And he said, we can't answer them. Can't answer him. And he was like, what? <laughs> and then she began crying again. You know, like, like you can't answer for me. Like, you all know I'm innocent. Like, you know, you, <laughs> and she's so upset that people were not, you know, they're not saying. But everybody's waiting for the wahyu. They're all just waiting for the wahyu. 
Right, so then she began to cry again. I said, Aisha. And it says, By God, I will not repent to God of what you mentioned ever. Right, very strong. Like, I am not repenting. Because I'm no sin. Right, no sin, what repentance. Right, by God, I know that you have listened to this talk until it has taken a hold of you and you believe it. And if I were to say to you, I am innocent, you will not believe me. And if I were to confess something that Allah knows I am innocent of, you will believe me. See how, how her, her, her speech, her speech, you know? Like, I will not repent, and, I, and it's no use. This house in our language says, no use, because you believe to all of them, and now you believe all of them. So even if I say I am innocent, you won't believe me. If I say I am guilty, you will believe me, but it's not true. <laughs> that's, that's, that's basically what she just said. <laughs> like, in very, you know, then she did the hadith of Jamal the Arabic. Like, she's very upset. <laughs> Very, very upset. Right, so she said, By God, I find no example of you. Right, and I, but, right, so she says she doesn't know how to, to, to express, express this. This is very cute, but actually, the, the, the Arabic, you know, when we were learning the Arabic, it was very cute the way she, she's so angry. <laughs> and then she was like, and she's narrating the story. She said, You know, I said to him, you know, I, by God, and I said, By Allah, right, Wallahi, you know, I find no example for you, right, for me to explain this, except. And he said, I tried to remember right, the father of Yusuf, what's his name? <laughs> she, wanted to, you know, she knows a story in the Quran about Yusuf and his father. And he said something, I can't remember his name. <laughs> he says in the narration, like, his name, his name, Yaqub. <laughs> and so she actually narrates that, I, can't, I forgot his name. <laughs> but the father of Yusuf. <laughs> I remember what he said, right? So patience is more fitting, and Allah is the one who sought. I and mean, then, uh, wasabrun jamil, Allahu musta'an ala ma tasifun, right? So and sabrun jamil, right? And and patience is 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 a beautiful patience. Patience is is more beautiful for me, right? Allahu musta'an ala ma tasifun, right? And Allah will help me with what you all have described. So she remembered that verse, but she forgot the name of the one who <laughs> said it. <laughs> And she knew it was Yusuf's father. Right? Very cute, like, the way she, she tried to you know, use a Quranic verse and say that this is in my position. I am not. So for her, Macham, she's in front of the Prophet, Islam, but she's not seeing him. Right? She's already, she's gone. She's, what the ulama say is happening to her right now is because she's so severely tried that she's going very high in her stations. She's really being elevated at this point. Really, you might think, someone might read and say, can't be so rude to Rasulullah Islam. It's not that. It's not that she's being rude. Right? It's that she's, she's going so high right, that she no longer sees the means anymore. And the Prophet is a means. He's a means to God. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As great as he is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's still a means. Right? But she, she, she went past. Right? She's just witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this point. Right? Whereby, so she's like, you know what? I, I don't want to have anything to do with human beings. You human beings are just, you know, all faulty. <laughs> like, I'm going to, you know, Allah. You know, Allah knows and Allah will prove me. Right? And I don't have to say anything to any of you. Right? Not even you, Ya Rasulullah. So to, even to that extent, not, not even you. Right? I don't want to say anything. So, 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 you can see how strong. <laughs> huh? she, at this point, you will say, uh, this is the fifth year of Hijrah again. If you're Hijrah around, which is 14. Teenage angst. <laughs> Allahu alam. You know, Allahu alam. You know what's going on. You know now. Stuff Allah. 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 Stuff. But basically, she's very strong because she's so. She, she's like the point. It's so nonsense. <laughs> I can't even. It's so absurd. I can't even believe you're even giving this any attention. You know, like just to the extent. You know, Subhanallah. Say Aisha, Allahu anha wa arbaha. Right, so she says, you know, and then I turned around and lay down on my bed. So after she said all that, she just turned her back to him. She lay down <laughs> on her bed. And she did not want, and she said, I knew that Allah knew I was innocent. And of course, it's kind of behavior. Everybody would know you're innocent. Now, you don't even, you don't even, that you couldn't, when you couldn't care less, it means you know, you know what, God will handle. You know, God will show. Right? You know, God will show. Right, so I knew that God knew that I was innocent. And Allah will show my innocence because I was not guilty but by God. See, I swear by Allah, I never thought that Quran would be revealed on my behalf. Right, she said she never thought. She knew Allah would free her, obviously. She knew. 
she's very certain that Allah will, will reveal something maybe like Jibril will tell her or something like that and that she's, that she's uh, innocent but she never thought that it would come in the form of verses it just did not it never came to her that like me <laughs> you know like me like little me with 14 year old girl my story about my slander in the Quran <laughs> and he says no, she never thought that would actually happen for her like she never thought the Quran would be revealed on my behalf that it would be read in the masjid and recited in prayer like I believe I was too unimportant for God to speak of me in any matter like I didn't think that I was that important that Allah would put my story in the Quran you know like, like why would my story be in the Quran who am I Right, so she never expected it to come and appear in the Quran, but it came and appeared in the Quran, and Allah gave the ruling, right, so that the, the fiqh right, of it, right, of of this of this uh, situation, right, and then she says, so by God, right, she says, uh, I yet I hoped that Rasulullah SAW would have a dream, you know, something, <laughs> and she thought it would come as a dream, you know, something like, you know, like, but I didn't think Quran, Quran, you know, but some other way, Allah will give him a dream and show him. You know that I'm innocent. You know something like that. Right, by my way of dream, right? I was saying Muhammad, in which Allah would declare my innocence. Yeah, I you know I swear by Allah. Right, wallahi, Rasulullah did not move from his seat, nor did anyone in the room leave before it was revealed to him. Right, so at that point, revelation came. Right, so after going through all of that, and he finally came to her, and she did her outburst. Like on to him, and then she turned her back on him, and she she lie down. <laughs> she didn't want to look at him, right? and she was just she was crying now. She was crying, right? you know, in a lot of pain, and she was just making dua to Allah, you know, do something, you know, that this this is free me of this uh, slander, right? And then revelation came to Rasulullah SAW, and he was seized, right? He was seized by revelation, right? Uh, he was seized by what usually would happen of fever that would cause sweat to beat on his forehead like pearls, right? Despite it being winter day. A winter day as a result of the weight of the words that will be revealed. Okay, the way Rasulullah re- uh, receives revelation, there are many, several, there are several different ways. Right? Some of the ways are in dream form. Right? Some of the ways it will come as he will say, he will hear a bell, a ringing bell, like a, like a, like a faint bell. Then he will find the words already inside of him. Right? Some of the ways will be Jibril comes out in front of him and speaks to him directly. Like that. Right? And some of the times he will, he will, he will, he will, he will uh, go into seizure. He'll be seized, right? And, and he'll begin to sweat. So he'll begin to sweat, right? even though it's a cold day. Right? And then he will uh, come to, and the verses will be in his, in his heart already. Right? And when he, whenever, whenever he's receiving the revelation, that he'll be so heavy. Right? Then once he was on a camel, the camel sat. So heavy. And once he was on the Sahaba, his, his, his tie was on the Sahaba, and the Sahaba said, I thought my tie was going to break. Because it was pressed so hard. On the Sahabi Because of the weight of revelation So revelation is not something That every human being can go through right? you know, in, in, There's divine strength Given to a human being To handle revelation right? So it, uh, Muhammad, right? so, so it came right? And then he was seized And then there was sweat right? As for me When I saw that I was not frightened Nor was I concerned <laughs> Right, she was like she could. <laughs> she was so, she's she was so much um so being it. <laughs> I, I was not frightened. I was not concerned. Right, uh, I knew I was innocent of the deed, and that Allah, right, Subhanahu wa Taala, would not be unjust towards me. My parents, on the other hand, right, uh, very. My parents, on the other hand, very by the one in whose hands is Aisha's life. Until the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was revealed of this was relief of the strain, I thought their souls would depart their bodies in fear of what may be revealed, confirming people's talk. Right. So so she could see her because everybody was watching some getting revelation. They all were watching. And they saw him getting revelation. Right. So she 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 was like, I don't care what it was. So somehow they knew about that it's going to be about this matter, Yeah, they knew it. They knew it was going to be about this matter. They were all, yeah, they, 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 because he came right at that point, you know, so they, they knew, and he has not gotten revelation since. Mm. It means the entire time, no revelation whatsoever, nothing in between. It means nothing, nothing from the side or whatsoever, nothing. No revelation from the beginning to the end of the situation until this point. Mm. It's the first revelation that they got. So they knew what was going to be about the matter. Mm. So she couldn't care, let's go, she's like, ah, I'm innocent. So Allah knows I'm innocent. 
you know what? It's, it's good. She knows what's going to be the outcome, right? Her innocence is going to be going to be set. Right? But she said her parents looked so they were so pale <laughs> because they were so afraid of what was what was to be revealed. They didn't want to hear because if revelation and revelation says your daughter is guilty, you know, it's sealed. It's sealed. You know, so they, 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 are, they are still there on 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 the on the fence about this. You don't, they, they know she's innocent, but at the same time, you see how slander can even affect the parents. You know, it's how slander can even, because even when she said to them, answer him, and say, you don't know how, what to answer. And that broke her heart, you know, that shattered her. Like, how, you and my, my mother and my father can't even answer for me. Like, but that is how slander can really destroy. Right? Slander can really cause family members who know each other very well, doubt each other, right, by the extent of slander. Right? Islam, you know, hard on slander. Right? It did not get involved, right? It is of the worst of mass yet. It is right there, you know, after, uh, after murder and uh, af- after uh, uh, shirik and uh, leaving the parents or being cruel towards parents and then murder is right there. Slender. It's right there. Right, so it's of the very first few, the first, the, the top major sins, right, slender. So don't don't play with this kind of matters. Ah. this is something severe, severe. So then he says here, right? So then, uh, so I thought they would, they might die by by them being so scared as to what was going to be revealed to us. So so Lord, some regarding this matter, then Rasulullah was released and he was smiling. The first word that he said was, "O oh, Aisha, indeed Allah Himself has declared you innocent." Right, and I said, I, I praise and thanks be to Allah, not to you. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's very upset. Okay, <laughs> she thanked Allah, not you. <laughs> Say that to Rasul. Rasul knows her. He knows her character, and she's like that. Right? So she, he didn't take care of offense or whatever. She's upset, you know, and and she's basically she's not being rude. Right, but she's witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? She's like, she's like, into the point where she's just, you know what, I don't even want to care about human beings at all. You are human beings. I don't care about you all. <laughs> I only care about God. Only God knows I'm innocent. Right? So basically, she reached a station. The ulama say she reached a station right, that very few people actually reach. A station of very close closeness. Right? And they say, Mushahada. She was witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She had reached a wilaya, like a wali. Right? She had a wilaya, you know, and above that. Which is why Sayyidina Aisha had reached the station of Siddiqah. Right? Siddiqah, the Siddiqah, right, is the one that is right beneath the prophets. So the highest of human beings are the prophets and the messengers. Right? The level that's right beneath them are the Siddiqin. Right? The Siddiqun, the Siddiqin. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Siddiq is one of them. So in Aisha, at this point, she reached, right? So right believe the level of prophet. I say in Maryam, uh, Imran, the mother of Sayyidina Isa, she's a Siddiqah. I say in Aisha, a Siddiqah. Right? You will find her name written that way in some of the books. Aisha, a Siddiqah. Right? There is the one who has reached the level of Siddiqah, which is really, is, a, is, is above Wali, is above Qutub, is above, is like really like way right there. The next step is prophet. You know, when you can't be a prophet, you know, there's no other prophet. Right, but she's right there. Right, the very next level. You know, so at this point, uh, she said, praise to Allah, uh, to Allah and not to you. For I was in my utmost of my fury. <laughs> I was so angry. <laughs> Still angry, you know, in the situation. Right, uh, and my parents said to me, rise to him. You know, go to him and thank him. And I said, by Allah, I will not go to him and I will not thank him. <laughs> and she said that, nor will I thank you. He said to her parents. <laughs> said, but I thank and I praise Allah. He's the only one who defended me. You know, he's the only one who, you know, uh, may he be glorified, who declared my innocence. Indeed, you heard this talk and you did not renounce or change it. So you now Bakar stood and went to her and kissed her head. Right, so he, he has mercy on his daughter, you know, right? So of course you don't you don't you don't respond to her with anger, right? Because she's in a state, you know, right? But she's so fed up with everybody, <laughs> right? So so she's in a state, 
Right, so right now, what, what needs to be done is to hug her. Right, to hug her and to calm her. Right, so, he went, so when Nauka saw that, so he went to her and he kissed her. Right, and she said to him, could you not have defended me? To her father, you know, how come you didn't defend me? Like, why didn't you say anything? And he said, and he said, and Rashad Nabokar said, which sky will shade me and which land will hold me if I speak about something I don't know? Because the truth of the matter is that it's your word against their word. You know, there's no camera. There's no, so, so even though I know you as my daughter, right, but substantial proof, hard proof, we have no proof either way. Of course, Islam thereafter gave the ruling right, that innocent until proven guilty. And Islam gave that ruling, but before there was no ruling. So for them, there's no proof of innocence and there's no proof of guilt. There's no hard proof. There was no witness. Right? So Sayyidina Abu himself is like, what am I going to say? Right? How can I, how, I, know, I know you're innocent, but I have no hard proof. And the same thing goes on all time. I have no hard proof, no concrete proof. What do I say? Right, when, when the Munafik uh, attacked me thereafter. And what do I say? Right, so so they, they, they all held back. You know, so Aisha was upset with them for doing so. Right, and then, uh, then, then and Allah subhanahu revealed, uh, indeed, uh, so now that this is the ayat that Allah has revealed in, in, in the account. So in Aisha, in Surah An-Nur, right, uh, ayat 11 to 20. Right, let's see the, the, the ayat. Eh? Let me see the ayat. Right, let's look at the, the, from the Quran. Right, Surah An-Nur. Surah Nur is one surah that I really want to memorize. <laughs> it's such a beautiful surah. Inshallah, one day. Yeah, it's a very beautiful surah. All right. So the verse of Surah Aisha, right, verse eleven to twenty, right, whereby Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim." إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ For surely, the one who has come to you with a false accusation, slander, right, from a group amongst you, لَا تَحْسَبُوهُ شَرًّا لَكُمْ right, Do not think that it is bad for you. بَلْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَكْتَسَبَ مِنَ الْإِثْمِ Right, so don't think that it is bad. This entire this entire episode, right? Don't think this episode that happened to you, right? That this slander came is something that is bad. It is good because it's going to teach you on a lesson, right? A very strong lesson, right? So and and uh, uh, it is good for you and for everyone amongst them. There is a there is a sin. They have sin and there's a punishment for them, right? And then he says here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. وَالَّذِي تَوَلَّا كِبْرَهُ مِنْهُمْ لَهُ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Right, and he says that and the one, right, who, Masayana Muhammad, uh, at, at, so, so for each of them there is a punishment, and the one who took upon himself a greater punishment, that means the one who has taken on this matter to spread, right, for him a great, the greatest punishment. Right, so each of them who took, partook in this matter, who even spoke about it and spread about it, they all are sinful. And, but the one who tawalla, tawalla means he has make it, made it uh, like a, a duty on himself to spread it or on him, most severe punishment. And Allah, now Allah gives the hukum. Right? لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعَتُمُوهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكُمْ مُبِينٌ I say, why is it not that when you all heard all of these things, you heard all of this, you know, the believers of the men and the believers of the women, right, that, you don't, that, that, you, that you don't think good, you know, of the one who's being spoken about, right? That you don't say think, something good of themselves, you know, of, of each other as believers and say, this is an obvious falsehood. Ifk. Right? Ifk is basically something so false. Right? It's an ifkul mubin. It's a very clear falsehood. And Allah says, Lawla ja'u alayhi bi arba'ati shuhada fa'idh lam ya'u 
فَأَتُوا بِالشُّهَدَاءِ فَأُولَئِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ So Allah says, and why why didn't they come with four witnesses? Now the blue ring comes. Four witnesses. Tell you know why they come with four witnesses, and those who don't come with four witnesses, Allah considers them liars, even if they saw what is true. Which is one witness liar, right? So four witnesses to be true. And so Allah gives the ruling, right? Uh, hukum. You don't go around slandering women. Right. So, house is so hard. <laughs> right. It's so hard. The law. Right. You know, in Islam, when when if a, if a husband were to um, basically blame his wife for cheating, right, or a wife blames the husband for cheating, right, and they come to court, right, and it's just he stood against her word, right. So basically, for example, okay, usually in Islam, you know, in the past, it's just basically him blaming her because. The man he can marry more than one, <laughs> so why would he cheat? Can <laughs> he's going to marry lah? <laughs> right. So uh, basically, uh, he he would basically blame her right, for cheating on him. I raise his word against her word, right? They actually go to court, makama, right? And uh, if neither of them admit, right, that he, if he does not admit that he is uh, slandering her, right, or she does not admit that he is right and she, she did cheat on him, right? Then the law in Islam is actually very interesting law, lah, but it's scary. The law in Islam is that basically in front of the judge, if the them relents, the man will say, right, uh, I swear, uh, he will take an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three times. Take an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I swear uh, that she uh, indeed cheated on me, you know, committed adultery, right? And if I am a liar, May Allah's curse be on me. And then she will have to say, I swear, by the name of God, oh, no. I did not cheat on him, and he is a slanderer. Right? And if I am a liar, then may Allah's wrath be on me. So basically, that's, that's basically the, the, the end of that. And after they both have done that, case closed, dismissed. Huh? Uh, how do you stay married after the end? <laughs> I mean, if you want to stay married, you can stay married. Up to you. And we have to curse each other. <laughs> but basically, then, but curse of Allah means no rahma. No rahma. Wrath of Allah, punish. Yeah, the kiss in that way. It means they both will take Allah's name and vow. So the liar, oh, taro, taro, taro. terrible, terrible. Because one of them has to be lying. It can't be they're both telling the truth. <laughs> One of them is a liar. Right? This is as severe as the Islam. But cheating got range. Huh? I mean, cheating got No, range. no, adultery. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Has to be adultery. You can't just uh, accuse her of like basically sitting with a man or going out with him and whatsoever. No. It has to be adultery, adultery. And you have to witness it. So Islam is very clear on this. Very clear. You cannot anyhow play with this situation. No, husband and wife don't need. Husband and wife don't need. Husband and wife. It's quite his husband and wife situation because it could be that he entered his home and he found her uh, with someone else. Right, so he witnessed it. So he was the owner who saw it. But he right. the, the, the act, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm. So, so that extends. So this is all laws in Islam. It's all laws. To protect the fabric of the family, society. Is, is, Islam is so serious about protection of community. So serious. And you see in our society, where all of this is all neglected, the breaking down of the unit. Should we? And when it's broken down, what happens? Children don't grow up well. When you don't grow up well, what happens? Criminals. Right? Uh, crime, widespread. And then it's not safe anymore. Right? Danger. Right, it's, then it just becomes a, a huge snowball <laughs> that just you know keeps growing. So it's from the very nip of it, you know, stop it there, right? <laughs> right, because there's a thing about it. This is the thing to 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 to, to create a, a situation right, or a community whereby this next generation can grow up well, and then they're healthy, right? Emotionally, uh, uh, mentally, spiritually, physically. 
right? Then they can they can nourish and the human beings can prosper, can progress. As we see, it's not it's so it's mind blowing that the Sharia. The Sharia is mind blowing. And when you go into it, it's so so ingenious. <laughs> Is 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 divine? It can't be hu- a human being who's just thinking of this. But well, basically, that's that's, that's the story. Right, so basically, four witnesses. Right, so one who wants to claim, uh, uh, wants to slander another, one wants to claim uh, a person has has committed a sin to that extent. Right, and then he says, and Allah Subhanahu says, وَلَوْ لَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ لَمَسَّكُمْ فِي مَا أَفَضْ Right, so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right, And if it was not right, for the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy on you in this world And the hereafter right, You would have been afflicted by a great punishment then and then Because Allah had mercy on the believers in Medina Allah did not send any bala If Allah wanted to That you dare slander the wife of the Prophet and hurt him to that extent. If Allah wanted to, Allah could send right, a bala, wipe you all out. Right? I mean, Allah could. Allah, and no one can blame Allah. Allah could do anything he wants to do. Right? But Allah did not because Allah's mercy and Allah's uh, favor upon the Sahaba. Right? Because they fought in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah had, had mercy. And we're going to speak about, about the, uh, the, 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 the cousin of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq uh, next lesson. Eh? Right? Because it's this, the, the follow up right, of, the, of the slander. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Is it a lakawna who be al sinatikum, what a kuluna be of wahikum, malay salakum be al, what a sabuna who hayina wahua in the law he alim. So Allah says, So when you all come, you know, and, and you begin to say things with this tongue of yours. And you think it's something light, something not, not an issue. But with Allah, it is severe, it's great with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah explains to human beings, slander is not light. It's heavy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so, and you receive your tongues, and see if your mouth, what you have no knowledge of, and you think it is insignificant. But with Allah, it is tremendous. It's a great word that you all have just said. Right, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ قُلْتُمْ قُلْتُمْ مَا يَكُونُ لَنَا أَن نَتَكَلَّمَ بِهَذَا سُبْحَانَكَ سُبْحَانَكَ هَذَا بُهْتَانٌ عَظِيمٌ So why didn't you, when you heard all of these things, this is nonsense, you hear all of this slander, say, you know, it's not for us to speak about these things. We have no knowledge. Right, glory be to Allah. For surely this it is a great slander. Right, say that because you have no proof. So anything comes to you, even if it's true, no proof, slander. You write it up as slander. Right, if there's no proof, Subhanallah. Really, Allah guards over people. So even if it's true, it allows for the person to tawbah. Right? So even you know, there's goodness all the, all around. Right, this this entire law. يَعِذُكُمُ اللَّهُ أَن تَعُودُوا لِمِثْلِهِ أَبَدًا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah warns you that you ever go back to such an act if you are truly believers. He warns you. Do not, do not, don't you dare come in this kind of act ever again. One time, never again. And the Zahaba learned that lesson very hard. Right? Why? Because it spread. Allah allowed it to run its course. So through the believers, it went through everything. It spread. Right? Then Allah, you know, he, he hit, 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 hit. It was a lesson they never forgot. Ever. Right? And don't you dare go back to this kind of uh, behavior. Ever. If you're true believers, you don't ever get involved in slander. Right? So uh, on our time, you know, subhanAllah, you know, if we need to be ready, guard ourselves. You hear, you know, uh, anything bad about other people, shut it up. I don't hear it. Right, so he says here, 
وَيُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ إن الذين يحبون أن تشيع الفاحشة في الذين آمنوا لهم لهم عذاب أليم في الدنيا والآخرة والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته وأن الله وأن الله رؤوف رحيم and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that for surely you know, Allah makes it clear for you his signs, you know, his laws and Allah knows he's all wise and for surely right, those, those of you who love to spread all this fahisha right, spread all these you know, indecencies you know, and, and, and slander falls under Indecency, you spread all this, you know, foulness, right? Be amongst those who believe, right? For them, it's a painful punishment in this world, which, which is basically the hudud loss, right? It's going to be hit on them, the 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 the, the, the whips, they're going to be whipped, right? And uh, and in the next world, even a worse punishment. And Allah knows, you all don't know, right? And Allah sees it because you know what people will, will, people will argue why the law is so severe. Right, why so severe? Just slander can can survive. You get you get whipped by slander. Why? Right. So Allah knows. Allah knows why. You don't know. Right? Allah knows how severe this can be. So the law is going to be very severe against those who do this. Right. And if and if it was not for the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His favor on you, right, for surely Allah is the most compassionate, the most merciful. Right? So from this Chronicles, they they formed the law of Allah. No, from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, from Rasulullah SAW. Right, and then a few more verses because it's up to verse, you know, case okay, other there, uh, verse twenty. Eh? All right, so so basically, this surah, you know, uh, to this story, right, is taken from Sahih Bukhari, other parts of of the the text of the ulama and the, the imams. Right, so so inshallah, um, right, so uh, you know this, you know this stuff one. And the Safan, uh, the, the man who was Yusayna uh, Aisha, he is so innocent. He has never even come near a woman. You know, he's never even like he's never, he's never even come near, you know, physically to a woman. And he was so shocked, you know, because he has yeah, said, I've never even, you know, touched a woman's shit. You know, like, like, like never even so, he's so, so innocent, this of one. Right? <laughs> so he was so, he was so much, I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I've never even, you know, come near any of those people. <laughs> those are the others. He was in his home and he knew about it, right? But basically, there was a narration about him, right? Whereby, whereby says that when he was asked about, right, and found to be one who was unable to approach women, he basically, he, he, he was scared of women. <laughs> He had a thing about women, so he he stayed away from them. So lagi, you know, like he's like, you know, and, and when he was asked about it, when he heard what was being said about him, he said, Subhanallah. I by the by the one who says it in my life, never did I lift the cover of a female. Ever. I, <laughs> ever. I never touched the his her shirt. Like, you can talk about me going near her. <laughs> and so he's so innocent to that extent. Right. Uh and, and this uh soft one he later he passed away as a martyr. Shahid. Right, so he's a true, true believer, the soft one. Right, so inshallah next year we'll go in uh, a bit more right into the consequences right of this um uh, situation. Right, inshallah. Right, and then right next up uh, thereafter is the Ghazal of Khandak right, reaching there. Right, so Allah, any questions about this? Uh, fitna okay, in the Arabic word, fitna means trial. Arabic word in the Arabic word, fitna means trial, trial, trial. So it's a fitna. It means a trial, right? So it, uh, when Allah says Allah, Allah sends fitna. It means Allah sends trials to the people, right? The word in Arabic for stand is buhtan. So buhtan specifically means stories that you that you tell that are not true, right? To defame someone else, right? That is slander. Right, the Malays have taken the word fitna to mean slander. So when we learn, when we know the word slander in Malay, 
Right, we think uh, fitnah. I need fitnah, I need fitnah. Right, but basically fitnah in Arabic means uh, trial. Uh, so it's basically a Malay word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So fitnah can actually be a good thing. Right, it's basically a trial. Right, so when Allah says that um, uh, that that uh, persecution, right, or so you know, it says that fitna is worse than slaughter. Right, fitna, right, fitna is worse than. Uh, I can't remember the verse. Okay, I get the verse, but there's there's a verse about it. You know about fitna spreading fitna is or, or fitna, right, being being. I'll get the verse. Now I'll talk about it. I won't talk about it now. No, 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 Arabic, 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 trials, when, I'll, I'll speak about it, I'll speak, I'll, I'll look for the verse, I'll, I'll see what it says. Well, the fitna to ashaddu min al qatil, right, the verse, right, and, and the fitna is worse than, than, than killing, right, so, so in this verse, the word fitna is not slander, slander is off the trials, Right, but the fitna in this verse is speaking about the uh, basically the the corruption that's in the land. So not specifically slander, corruption. Well, the fitna to ashadu min al Right? Uh, yeah. So and and fitna is worse than 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 killing. Right. So that one is basically corruption. Corruption in society is worse than murder. Because corruption destroys generations right, in society. So that, that verse tells us that it's not about uh, slander. That verse is actually about corruption. Corruption in society. Right. Okay. Just now you mentioned about the four witnesses to validate the, whether that person is wrong. Then what about like, right now we have like photographs or videos. Does that equate? So if... If like now like all this media can, yeah. if they did if they put the 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 camera, you know, in a room whereby it's private. Uh, that means this was done in privacy, and someone spied, right? Then that one is not, as far as I have learned, it's not the four it's not four witnesses, because the four witnesses to show that they were so, uh, they disregarded Allah's laws so, ugly in such an ugly way. That is so public that you know unless they broadcast on the internet. Mm. And so if they themselves broadcast, is this? yes. So all of that, okay. if it's under uh, Islamic law, uh, it's all under the hudud laws. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but but if someone spied on them and put a camera there and lying <laughs> jitu, because they were doing it secretly. Yeah, now now it's all. <laughs> you know, there's this. <laughs> I will stop there in one. Uh, but there's a website. Uh, I was reading it on some article, and I see why all these articles. <laughs> right, but there's one article about this. You know how you have matchmaking websites. There's also a website on matchmaking to have an affair. There are, there are, there are, there are. websites whereby people married couples go there to find uh, someone to have an affair with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's so it's so it's such a ahezaman red light, you know. It's so disgusting, but yeah. Anyway, all, may Allah protect us and alhamdulillah for modesty and chastity. Right, it's something that in Islam is really, really, really emphasized. Right? Alhamdulillah for Sharia. Right, Sharia, Sharia is a and from this story, like Sharia is um, mercy from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and the expression of Allah Subhanahu Wa love for His creation, Sharia. Uh, people think that Sharia is Allah being harsh, Allah being controlling Allah. What, how? What is it? What is it to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He controls us? You know, like you think what is a fun fair for Him? You know, I mean, <laughs> it's not that like, is 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 He's gleefully you know putting us under control. You know, Allah puts on the laws for our benefit, right? For you to function well as a society, as, as, as human beings, you know, and then come to the next world, inshallah. Right? Allah's not having fun with this, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from His love and mercy that He put in Sharia. Right? Laws, are there, laws are there due to love and mercy. And every parent knows that. 
every parent knows that when you put laws in the house, it's for you. No, it's for them. It's for them. When you put laws on them, no chocolate after what time, sleep by what time, it's, it's, it's for the benefit of, of the ones under you. So with God, you know, in the larger extent, right, it's, God's not, not doing it for himself. You know, you think he's, he likes, you know, having all this. Allahu alam. You have a question. Yeah. It's, 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 it's restriction. Yeah, but I mean, if you want, it, it needs the, this kind of thing can be done overnight. This kind of thing it has to be slow talk, right? So, so for example, with teenagers, you know, teenagers or youngsters, right? That you would um, explain to them, right? So, I mean, you can give them like like you know, scenario, right? You know, by you know, or maybe you explain to them that you do you think that you know all of these laws, for example, with all these laws, like do you believe they come from God? Do they, do they believe God from God? Okay. Do you think God is affected right, uh, by these laws? No. Then why did God legislate these laws? What's the reason? Then, of course, if teenagers can always bring in the point of view of a parent, you can. You say, you know, if a parent says to a baby right, or to a child, or oh, you must eat your vegetables, or you cannot eat uh, ice cream at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> you, know, like, like, you know, like a parent does that. So a, a, a teenager usually will have the sense right, to know why a parent would say that to a baby. So if you're put in church, church of a baby and the baby wants to, I don't know what the baby wants to do, <laughs> but the baby wants to you know, play with, uh, touch the plug or the baby wants to play with water uh, on the floor, right? Uh, and as a teenager, you're like, no, you cannot play water on the floor. Why? Right, because you fall and, 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 and hurt yourself. Right? Then it's really you click. Right? The, why do you put a law on the baby? Because the baby doesn't know. What's good and what's bad for him, so actually I pull it that. But it 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 takes time to actually talk, right? Uh, this kind of things it takes time, not overnight. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So the the prophets are there actually as a. As Allah, like you know, if you can't figure this out, just copy this one. <laughs> just copy them, right? copy the prophets, and you you get there, you get there. Right? And, alhamdulillah, so let's test for like like life examples, lah. So which also tells us that human beings require life examples, and right? then they know how to behave. If there are no life examples, they can't. They don't know how to behave, and that's the strongest way of teaching, and that's the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, alhamdulillah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam, Sallam alhamdulillah, Rabbil alamin. الفاتحة أن الله رزقنا عمل نافع ومخاص مقبوس وعمل خالص مقبوس التعليم ودل الهدى ويصلي بالقبر النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وإلى وعن من مشايخنا وزلك علينا وإلى حضر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة Sunnah Rahman Rahim wa Asr. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin.